I don't think like you're thinking, oh, like Holland, how am I gonna stop it? It's not mm. most of that. It's like what he's doing is a bad decision. Yeah, because like, like last one, like there's like petitions mm. going around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I might have to sign it. I might have to sign it. Yeah, <laughs> but. <laughs> Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. We're back in home comforts, back in the <laughs> usual studio. Um, I'm joined with Dej, what are you saying my guy? I'm blessed my bro, looking forward to today's one. We've got a man that his team are in top form. I actually checked before we came on like fifth in terms of the last five um, games that have been played in the Premier League. So it's going to be good to talk about how the team have revived their fortunes and that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. No, definitely. I can't wait to get into this episode. Before we get into it, follow the YouTube channel, The Beautiful Game Podcast. Hit the like button. Leave a comment in the below for the algorithm. And if you want to keep seeing content like this, you know what to do. <laughs> keep commenting yeah. below. Follow our Twitter handle, which is at podcast underscore TBG, and our Instagram, which is at pod underscore TBG. And before I introduce the guests, I just want to quickly say we reach out to so many footballers all the time and you've been one of the most accommodating, mm. responsive footballers that we've ever spoken to. So we appreciate that. Yeah, big up, bro. We are joined with <laughs> Jaden Anthony. Yeah. Big up, <laughs> big up. Nah. No, thank you for having me, man. No, nah, I love for coming on. As Dot said, we've been speaking to you for a while, building up a relationship, following your journey. So to have you here in person and you travel down for this as well. So like, big up yourself, bro. No, nah, I appreciate that. No, obviously I was, I was saying to you guys before as well. Um, I watched the pod as well. I've seen some episodes. So yeah, nice. It was nice to be on here. No, I love, love for that. Yeah, so look, let's kick it off. Talk to us about the hair and now. You guys, you know, defeated Leicester yesterday for context. Talk to us. What's, what's going on at Bournemouth? No, big win, man. Um, yeah, no, it's good right now. Obviously, I'm, I'm beating them five. Um, team's doing well, man. We're, we're just trying to keep pushing. Obviously, you have a target, try and stay up. And, you know, um, it's going well right now. Yeah, because, like, since the new gaffer coming, Gary O'Neill, as you mentioned, five undefeated. And that's also included like two turnarounds. Like one of the games you got the winner. Yeah. So like, what has Gary done that maybe obviously wasn't being seen in the in the previous regime? To be fair, um, no, he hasn't he hasn't changed too much. Um, obviously, he's been with us for a while in terms of, um, but with other managers as well, he's been a, a coach. And um, yeah, no, nah, he just instilled belief in us and, and let us know that he believes in us. And I think as a team, that's all you really want. And yeah, now we're just we're all working hard to, to try and get results and, and luckily it's going well right now. So on a day-to-day -day basis, like how has he been? Because he's very highly rated. Um, I know he had a spell at Liverpool, you know, very respected within the game. So how has he been from a tactical standpoint? Yeah, no, nah, he's 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 brilliant. Obviously, yeah. Um, He's a, he's had a great career as well, and you know he's a he's a proper good coach. Even before he, he came into management, um, he always had respect for him as a player in terms of um, the detail he gives you and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not surprised that he's he's doing so well as a manager, and yeah, no, um, I'm happy for him. Because mm, it's sort of like chalk and cheese. Scott Park after the first few games, obviously you beat Aston Villa, then you played I think Manchester City, Liverpool, yeah. and Arsenal, and there were defeats and. After the games, there was almost like a defeatist approach. Some people might call it defeatist. Some people might call it realistic. It was sort of like <laughs> saying, oh, listen, we're ill-equipped at this level kind of thing. And when you look at what Gary's done, at least in the short term, that's been proven sort of... Redundant. Yeah, redundant because, yeah, like as a player, how was it sort of watching your manager come out after games and sort of saying we're ill-equipped? Because it's sort of like the argument where managers say, oh, my team are tired. You sort of start to believe it kind of thing. So yeah. for you as a player in the dressing room, how was that? No, to be fair, like I always speak highly of, of the old manager as well. Like he, he was top with the players and probably behind the scenes, he, he was, it wasn't like that. So as a player, he always gave you belief oh. as well. So um, yeah, I think when you when your team coming up and you got uh, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool in, in your first few fixtures, it's not going to be easy. And yeah, no, I think anyone 
looking at it at the start of the season would have wrote us wrote us off anyway. So, um, but when you're in it and you get three big defeats against tough times, it's, it's it's hard, isn't it? So, mm. yeah, now nah, man. Um, obviously now it's it's nice that we we've got uh, some good results and, and confident, but yeah, no, nah, um, it's it's weird as a player um, in those moments, but you just you don't really focus on it really. So how was the confidence after the Liverpool game after you yeah, obliterated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> was that, it, yeah, that yeah. one was that was tough. Uh, obviously, because we we had played Arsenal and, and Man City before, and they weren't easy as well. Mm. Obviously, um, and big defeats and those as well. And then yeah, Liverpool, it just felt like nothing was going. Um, mm. Any shot that they took was good. <laughs> and you def- like literally, yeah, yeah. you turn around so, and you yeah, know it was a tough day. And you yeah, know after that it was it was hard. And then obviously the manager got sacked not too long afterwards. So it was a weird week, but yeah, no, it was a, a bad day for sure. Because mm, I was watching the game. I'm a Liverpool fan for context, and I <laughs> saw you. Your eyes were just on Robbo. Like it's sort yeah. of like you were given a job to yeah. sort of man mark him because obviously we know Liverpool's attacks come from their fullbacks, Trent and Robbo. So is that your instruction? That literally yeah. don't let this guy. <laughs> I could see yeah. you were just literally yeah. my, my role that game was wherever he goes just follow him try and, try and stop the supply but these man I could you, you stop one player there's, mm. there's another one that's going to punish so mm. yeah and on that day it was, it was a tough day out still how do you analyse your personal season so far? Um, it's been yeah it's been different to, to last year obviously last year I was I was heavily involved I was starting most games I played I only missed one game I think it was um, and then this year, obviously, I haven't been starting as much, but I feel like when I've come on, I've, I've done well, and yeah, now I've shown my quality. So I'm just keep pushing, um, working for for my chances, and, and when they come, I'll, I'll be ready as always. But yeah, no, I'm just enjoying it. I think it's also important to be present in the moment and think. Like two years ago, I was playing in 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 the 23, so mm-hmm. now I'm in on the bench every week in the prem and and coming on and making impact. So. Um, yeah, no, um, I'm enjoying it and, and hopefully I can keep pushing and, and, and keep going and, and getting the team. Because mm, it's interesting that I've got friends that are Bournemouth fans and they were talking to me saying last season our three most consistent players were um, Jay-Z, obviously the left back, <laughs> Dom Solanke and yourself. So like you not being in the team has sort of surprised them, if you understand what I'm saying, because they say you're a proper player. Yeah, yeah obviously last year was, was a big year for, for all of us, I think. Um, and yeah, like like you said, I was in the team quite a lot. So, but obviously the level goes up, and we we made some signings and and play a different formation now. So, there's loads of factors that go into it. But yeah, like I think it's football. You can't you can't have the the mentality of mm. oh I'm, I'm down. You just got to be ready and and take your chances when they come. And, and that's what I'm trying to do really. Mm, so do you think again your contract expires next summer? And obviously you speak to players all the time, and they sort of think mm, maybe why aren't I playing? Is it to do with my contract situation, <laughs> etc. <laughs> So, like, do you think it's interlinked? Nah, not really. I don't, I don't really think about that, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's football. Obviously, we have um, a lot of players and a lot of quality players and the manager has to pick a team at the end of the day. And, mm. yeah, someone's going to have to be on the bench. And at the moment, I'm, I'm not starting, but um, I'm sure one day it will change and, I, and I'll be helping the team as much as possible. And that's all, I, that's all I'm focused on, really. So, has there been discussions in, ter- in regards to a new contract? or? Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, we've been we've been speaking since uh, last season as well, but um, yeah, it's more to do with like my. I don't really focus on it. I'm just um, football, 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 and yeah, um, we'll see what happens. Because mm, I know there was sort of interest in the summer from like obviously three Premier League clubs. Was anything sort of almost close to you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy one. Um, <laughs> no, you have to, like, yeah. all my fans no, want to know, no, you know, no. like... I hear it, I hear it. Yeah. No, I, to be fair, I don't, I don't think there was anything um, that close, but, you yeah, mm. know, there was, there was interest and, you yeah, know, I just um, focused on, on the football and, and I left all of that to, to my agent because mm, you know. like it's important like, on this podcast like we ask those questions <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe, yeah, yeah. Again, maybe people think we're tapped but we like to know because fans yeah, yeah, obviously no, ask yeah. those questions innit yeah, so yeah, like, no, yeah, that's, no, that's the reason why I ask mm-hmm. but yeah I want to talk about your start to the season then we're going to talk about the more positive yeah. start of thing like people are talking about Erling Haaland, calling him an <laughs> eye robot. And when you look at the stats, Bournemouth are the only team that have stopped him scoring. Mm, so yeah. like watching, I know you didn't play that game, but watching on the sidelines, what were you thinking as you were sort of watching him? To be fair, like you stop Erling Haaland, but then... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you the yeah, doing yeah. the madness. Um, but yeah, like, I was just thinking, like, these man, they don't make 
a mistake. Like they don't give the ball away, no sloppiness. Mm. And that's like the level you gotta try and aspire to be at. So you know, I was just watching thinking, like it's a tough day for my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it was. Because it, I think Jamie Carragher done a analysis on Monday Night Football in regards to Erling Haaland. And he's like, you know, teams are actually like scared. When they come up against him, they're thinking, you know what, this is an unstoppable <laughs> sort of force. Is there like discussion in the changing room about Erling Haaland between players? Um, probably in terms of what he's doing right yeah, now. What he's doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never seen anything like that. I have yeah, to be real. Like, what he's doing he's is... He's hat tricks for fun. Yeah. Even they're taking them off to stop him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, nah, what he's doing is, is a madness. So. so do you like talk about it like, oh, Haaland, like another hat trick? Is that like dressing room talk, is it? I, I guess so. Like, we're, here, like, <laughs> we're, we're all obviously we're all watching, seeing yeah. what he's doing. But I don't think like you're thinking, oh, like Holland, how am I gonna stop it? It's not mm. more so that it's like what he's doing is a madness. Yeah, because right like last one, like there's like petitions mm. going around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really so I'm not gonna. I've signed it, bro. Yeah, yeah, because no, this is. I'm with it still, I'm with it. It's too good. Bro. I think it's closing in on what like two million votes. Sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm going to add one more to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, talking on a personal perspective as well, like, making your Premier League debut against Arsenal, the team that obviously you left as a youngster, like, how was that moment? It was crazy, man. Um, obviously, the first two games, I didn't come on, so I was, I was like, oh, when's my chance going to come? And yeah, no, the way the world works, it was just, it was mad that, obviously, it came against Arsenal. We, 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 we lost the game, which was annoying, but, yeah, no, it was mad that I could come on and have that, that moment against the team I grew up at. So, yeah, no, it's special. Do you set, like, personal targets at the start of the season? You want to make, you know, X amount of appearances. You want to score X amount of goals. You want to assist X amount of goals. You want to create <laughs> X amount of chances. Is that something you... you s- not not in terms of numbers. Obviously, I, I think the, the thing I try and do is I want to just impact the team as much as possible. I want to play as many games like last year. I would have never thought I was going to play, obviously, 45 out of 46. And then the goals, like, as I'm getting to, to 7, I'm like, I want to get to 10. OK, once I get to, to 10, I want to get to 15. So I don't really set it too far because I think that's, that's set up for disappointment if you, mm. if you don't make it. So I, I just want to keep keep pushing and, and helping as much as possible. I think that's the, the best way I, I look at it, really. Mm, and when I look at your story, it's inspiring because you've only been sort of playing professional football for a few years, is it like two, three years yeah, kind yeah. of thing? And it's sort of like every situation you've been thrown into, you've risen to the challenge. Yeah. Like, so where does that come from? Because some people is like, oh, if you throw them in certain situations, this is overwhelming, but you, you climb to the level. I don't know, to be honest. I think, mm. obviously, before the the first game last season, I was I was a nervous wreck. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I was at yeah. home, I was trying to keep myself busy, but... Like once I once I cross the line, I feel like like a switch always like I, I always say like I'm like quite a a, a like hearted guy like I'm yeah. always smiling laughing, mm-hmm. but if you see me when I'm walking out on a game like straight face, my missus is always like why you look so <laughs> angry? And I'm like, like I'm not angry. I just yeah. I'm in I'm in a zone. Like, so like once I'm once I'm once I cross the line, like it's, I think it's a different person and yeah, I just enjoy being out there, man. So what what do you do to get into the zone? To be honest, I, I try not to think about football as much as possible. So in the change room, I listen to my music, I'm, I'm talking, uh, joking around. And then once the game comes, because I don't want to be stressed about uh, actions that haven't come. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, I just try to relax, think about, mu- think about anything else. And yeah, when the game comes, I'm ready. Hmm, so like talking about more recent times, as we mentioned, Bournemouth, five games undefeated, two wins, three draws. There was a game that you scored and you came on as a sub. And I think first touch, you buried it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, talk to us yeah. about that goal as well. Yeah, it was mad. Um, yeah, um, come on the pitch. It was, a, it was a good game as well, to be fair. Like we went, I think, 2-0 down and um, half time we made like a switch of formation. And yeah, no, it, was a, it helped us a lot. And then we, we got two good goals and I think we was on top for the whole whole second half. And then, yeah, I come on and my eyes lit up, man. Yeah, I, just, yeah. I was just there. Yeah. I was thinking to press the, the centre back, but he's obviously made the mistake. And <laughs> I mean, I'm in eggs of space. Yeah. And to be fair, like, everyone was like, why didn't you take a touch? And my thing was, I just wanted to keep it down. I didn't mm. want to sky, I didn't want to be the guy. So, yeah, no. Nah, um, yeah, it was a special moment. And yeah, no, nah, uh, a special day for sure. Mm-hmm. And even like Dom Solanke, like, he sort of set up a similar action 
on Saturday that he did for your goal, like pressing the defender, yeah. forcing them into a mistake. So like, I really, really rate him. He's a top, top yeah. striker, man. Yeah, he's unbelievable, man. Um, and I think people will see um, how good he is this year for sure, man. He's not not just um, finishing. He does his all-round games unbelievable, man. Yeah, nah, um, everyone will, will see his quality for sure. And in terms of like keeping your composure when you get the ball, like w- what went through your mind in terms of like just being ice cool? Is it just on target? Is it okay? I'm aiming for this corner. What what goes yeah. through your mind? I think it comes from obviously you're in that situation a lot of times in training. So there's no defenders. You're, you're up against Vatican. So <laughs> so is it different? It is, it's definitely different. Yeah. Why? Because in training you're just there's nothing. There's no pressures. It's, so you're quite relaxed, but in the game, obviously, this is this might be your one chance mm. to, to finish the game off. So I'm like, <laughs> but in my head, I remember I was just like, just don't sky it. And I, in my head, I don't know why, I always thought it was bubbling, the pass was bubbling, but mm. if you look back, it's yeah, a it smooth mm. pass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no excuses. I, yeah, yeah, I have no excuses. I have no excuses. So. Yeah, no, I just, I just hit the target, obviously, picked my corner, and, and, and luckily it went in, man. Mm, so as we said, like right now, Bournemouth is a positive place. Like the fans are on side. The players are like unified. The manager, you see certain players saying in the press, sort of like Zamora and um, Solanke, that they want Gary O'Neill to be given the job. Like, where do you stand on that situation? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's mm. like he's a great, he's a great coach and a great manager. And yeah, no, I just um, I'm loving um, playing under him. But we'll see what happens. It's not my decision at the end of the yeah. day. So uh, we'll see what happens, man, for sure. And also there's like talk of a, a takeover right now with the American um, gentleman that's being linked with a takeover. Like, have you as players heard anything about it being closed the, or something? The same as you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you read like the newspapers and all of that stuff? I, I don't, I try not to. And I try oh, okay. my, tell my family not to as well. Like, don't, <laughs> don't go on Twitter, but... Even you know, when you scored the winner, you were there. You were, you were yeah. reading, didn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> I'm checking all my DMs. That's the one exception, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But no, nah, yeah. But like Sky Sports, all of that. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, nah. Uh, you hear, so you does hear that things. like talk come into the dressing room? Like, oh, have you seen you know, you know, potential new owners? Or what can this mean for our future? That kind of thing. Not really, no. Nah. Like obviously, everyone, everyone knows about it. Like, it's no secret mm-hmm. that um, something's happening. But yeah, no, nah, we we don't really speak about it. It's just we'll see what happens, man. That's all it is. No, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's almost like, do you, do you feel? Do you guys feel like you need to prove? you know, people wrong in terms of like, you know, the horrible result against Liverpool, the 9 nil losing to Manchester City, losing to Arsenal. Has that almost created like a siege mentality? Because everyone's saying Bournemouth, they're going straight back down to the champ. Like they've got no hope. Has that made you guys think, you know what, we need to rally together and prove people wrong? Um, Maybe there's an element to it. I think as a group, we've always, we've always been a quite a tight group, especially you see last year. Um, the the year we had and stuff like that so yeah no I think um, it's natural that that people doubt us obviously we come up and yeah I'll be on I'll be the first to say when the team comes up I I put them to be mm-hmm. going down first as yeah, well so yeah, yeah nice no, to be expected and yeah I guess we got to go and try and pre- prove people wrong and yeah no um, that's definitely the mentality and in regards to like you know the step up from the champ to the Premier League, obviously, you know, the first thing people will say is the quality. So you come up against, you know, world-class opposition week in, week out, some of the best players in the world. But quality aside, what would you say has been the biggest difference between the champ and the Premier League? Um, to be fair, I think in terms of like, you get more time on the ball. I think it's weird to say. Um, for like, yeah, because yeah, the champ, sense, someone yeah. will be behind <laughs> you ready to yeah, clamp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, stepping on your Achilles, everything. Mm. Um, yeah, it's weird to, to think it as well, but um, you get a lot more time. Everyone like they sort of respect your your quality, so they don't want to get don't want to create spaces. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think in the prem you get more time, but when you lose that ball, you might not see it for oh, okay. for a few minutes. Yeah. So yeah, you got you got to be efficient. So in terms of like your personal stuff, preparing for the Premier League, I know you sort of went to Mykonos, you done some training, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Is your preparation different from when you in the Championship to like prem? Um. Yeah, well, in terms of the summer, yeah. Um, obviously, I, I had a, a good year last year and I wanted to, to continue on that. So, yeah, um, I made sure I was doing my training with, with my coaches and on holiday and stuff like that. So, I wanted to get ready for a, a big season. And, yeah, no, the same in, in, the, in the season as well. We're, we're pushing. Obviously, the, in the champ, it's, it's usually two games a week. Um, so, you don't, you're really just playing, recovering, 
getting ready for the next one. But here you have uh, a whole week to prep for the to the team you're playing against. So yeah, we're really pushing and yeah, trying to get better uh, every week. Because mm, in that season in the champ, I remember towards the end, like Nottingham Forest, they were on a mad run, innit? Mad People like, you know what, Nottingham Forest yeah. were going to pit Bournemouth. Then you had that game at the Vitality. Yeah. When you saw Godfrey <laughs> run into the pitch, I said the pitch, I mean, <laughs> he was gassed. Innit? So like, yeah. how was that sort of chase? Because they were really like putting on the pressure. Yeah, it was mad to be fair, because um, they were right down at the start of the season. Um, I don't think they had won before they, they obviously changed managers. And then after that, they just went on a, a run where like they were probably one of the better teams in the league. and. Yeah, no, but we always felt um, confident we had a, an amazing start and then, yeah, obviously we had a, a blip in the middle and then, but that's that league, man. It's mm. not, it's like it's anyone, down. Dog fight, yeah, man. Yeah. Dog fight. A, anyone can beat anyone. Mm. So, yeah, we was always confident and, and when that game that game came, we, we, we wanted it. Right? Like, yeah, you could see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we was proper up for it. So, yeah, no, it was a, a special day for sure and a, a big game. If we had to have this chat, you know, in 12 months' time, what would you have wanted to achieve from like a personal standpoint? It's a good question, man. Um, yeah, still be a, a Premier League player. Um, it's definitely one, and then and hopefully establish myself as Prem, so people are, are, are noticing my name and, and seeing the talent I have. Um, mm. And then yeah, just just keep pushing and, and, and try and have some some special days, uh, mm. uh, some special away days, for example, like a better one at Anfield. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, just just an established Premier League player that, that people... Um, how, how was it playing at Anfield in terms of like atmosphere? Was it, yeah, was it, it was, mad? Yeah, it was mad, especially before the game. Mm. Like, the, they're so loud. Uh, <laughs> but you see like people come from all over the world. Mm. You see like the buses driving in, there's there's thousands of people waiting outside the stadium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The game don't stop for a few hours. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not early, but yeah, yeah no, nah, um, they're a massive club, and you know the atmosphere was crazy for sure. So, in terms of like the teams that you've played so far this season, for you personally, like watching and being involved in the game, which team has had the best quality that you've come up against? Would you say, in your personal opinion? I think Arsenal were uh, against us. They were they were yeah. unbelievable. I don't yeah. know what to say, but <laughs> no, like the few sellers that they've made, like um, they were they were top, and then. City, obviously, what I didn't come on, but just watching them, mm-hmm. you can see like when I say like these dot do not give the ball away. Mm-hmm. Like, Cancelo was doing flip flaps. <laughs> I was thinking this guy's a, a defender, but yeah, no, they're they're unbelievable, man. But yeah, those two, I'd, I'd say obviously Liverpool, but mm-hmm. I've almost wiped it from my memory. That game, so I don't know. How good they, they oh. really <laughs> cool. So take us back to the beginning, man. Um, Where are you from? Yeah, born and raised in in Hackney. Um, there with my mum and my brother. Um, yeah, and then yeah, grew up playing for Arsenal uh, from the age of six to sixteen, and then but yeah, um, from Hackney, always just love football, always kicking the ball around, and yeah, no, that's where it all started, man. Mm, so how did you get into football? Do you know what? I think like as a kid, I just copied my brother whatever he done mm. like with football. Um, if he wanted to use his left foot, I'm gonna try and use my left foot. Mm. Even outside of football, like. He, he didn't eat ketchup so now I don't eat ketchup like it was that real so yeah. I just I just wanted to be like my big brother and yeah no and then yeah we just took it uh, crazy and now now we're here man mm, so when was that first moment when you got noticed like by I don't know maybe a Sunday league club Saturday league club um, yeah no I, I can't remember how I got into the Sunday I think my dad knew someone um, <laughs> so, something like that like, so we like that, 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 <laughs> so we, um, we yeah I went to play for Edmonton All Stars and yeah, I was there for a few years. Um, our team was crazy. Mm. Uh, and then, well, yeah, nah. There's some ballers in that team that yeah, made it pro yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, also, like, which which players were you with? We got, um, I don't want to forget the one, but we got Tarek Rackway. Um, I mean, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right. No, yeah. but like, all, of us, all of us got scouted. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now nah, a lot of us are, are still playing now, so. But yeah, our team was crazy. And then I think we was at a tournament. At, we used to do like a, a tournament at the the end of a season. Like you, you do your season. And I think we went the whole season without conceding a goal. Jeez. What? That was yeah. like, it was mad. So freakish. It was mad. Uh, and then, yeah, we was at a tournament and uh, Arsenal and Chelsea scouted uh, me on that day. And like they scouted quite a few players. Like Chelsea got um, a few of them, like Martel, Taylor Crosdale. Um, but yeah, quite then went to Chelsea, and then I just went to one session of each, um, and then my my mum and dad let me choose, and yeah, no, I just went. I loved Arsenal, man. I loved mm-hmm. the vibe there, the coaches, 
everything. So I just went. So and my mum's an Arsenal fan as well. So okay, so, no wonder. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. ask the question that like, why did you pick? Okay, that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, it was an easy decision for me for sure. So talk to us about your time at Arsenal. Amazing man. Um, yeah, I was there from the age of six to to sixteen. Um, at, at first, you go like once a week, I think it is, and then you obviously sign your contract at, at nine, and then yeah, you go through the ranks, and yeah, and I met some amazing people. I went to some some crazy places, had tournaments all over the world. So yeah, now it's a, a special time in my life, and you know, I loved it for sure, man. Mm, I know you played with some like notable players. Like we've seen pictures of you with them. So like, just for context, like which sort of players were in your age group? In my age group, there was like um, Emil Smith Rowe. He's, he's smashing it yeah. now. Um, Reese Nelson, they got Don Thompson. He's at Blackpool. Um, Robbie Burton was abroad. There's, I'm gonna forget someone. Toby Abole. He was at Tottenham. He's gone. He's um, but he's injured now. But yeah, now there's there's quite a few. And then obviously yeah, in, in the year above we had loads as well. We had like Eddie and Katia, Joe Willock, uh, Marcus McQueen, all all of, the, all of those guys. So yeah, we had. Um, some talent around. Mm. Mm. So was it your decision to leave Arsenal? No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're Arsenal fan, isn't it? Yes. Oh, okay, so I'd what, love to say, what, yeah, nah, yeah. Um, I just got released age 16. Um, didn't get so, a fact, so let's say like, sorry to, to cut you off there, um, apologies, but yeah. like, let's say for example, you're 14, 15, are you thinking that I just need to stay here for as long as possible because the older I get, I'm getting closer to the first team? What is the what is actually the mindset at that age? 14, 15, 16? Yeah, to be fair, it's a, it's a good question. But yeah, it's just, we used to get, it was like two years at a time, two year contracts. <laughs> so I was just, I was yeah, fighting to get Even the one where I was under 14, I think I was, I was close. I would have been like, there would have been some no's. But yeah, um, I managed to get that one to 16. And then I was, um, yeah, I've, I thought I'd, I was doing well, and then, yeah, but there was some special talent in my age group, and yeah, no, um, just didn't get a scholar, and then, yeah, I had to move on. Yeah, because we talk about moving on, and, like, everyone's got goals of playing as high as possible, but there's different routes there, and obviously yeah. you've taken a different route, and it kind of reminds me of when we spoke to Nathan Teller. He was also at Arsenal, then yeah. had to, like, sort of rebrand himself, go to Southampton. And I know you had some spells um, on trial, like Crystal Palace, yeah, yeah. Cardiff, Hull. So talk to us around about those periods, like, when you're sort of released and you're finding yeah. your way again. It was tough, man. It was tough, especially because, um, obviously, you're down from, from getting released. Like, I'd never experienced it before. Um, so you're, you, it's a tough time. You, 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 you don't know what's going to happen next. And then your confidence is low from getting released and you're going straight into trials to, to other clubs. So I had to kind of build myself back up. And so, yeah, the first few um, didn't go as well as I would have liked. Like, I didn't I didn't play very well. And then I was thinking, oh, what's going to happen next? Mm. And then I went to, to Crystal Palace as well. And I, and I thought I'd done well at that one. I played a game. I scored a bag. I was like, I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, they're going to sign me. And then that didn't work out. I was like, that was another kick. And then... Yeah, I went to Bournemouth and, and luckily they took, a, they took a chance with me and yeah, no. Nah, and the rest is history as the they say. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, um, a crazy journey, but I enjoyed it for sure. So what, during that period, were there any times where you thought, oh, have I got in the locker or you're doubting yourself? Then family would say, oh, listen, come on, you got to keep going. I know Godfrey was sort of key as well. Yeah, yeah, so for like, sure. Yeah, um, yeah no, my family were big and, and very supportive in that time. Uh, I think it's, it's tough for anyone getting released, but especially... Like you got your GCSEs. Like I didn't want to go to school and tell no one that I'm very, like, <laughs> like that. So um, yeah, nah. Um, they were big for me, and yeah, I did have a prompt moment where like the confidence was low, but I always had belief. I always knew that I was a good player. So I was going to these trials and I was looking at the the squads and I was thinking like I can fit in here, mm. but I'm still getting told no. And then, <laughs> but then yeah, man. The, like I said before, I went to Bournemouth and I, I, I was full of confidence for some reason. I don't know why. Like, I was doing flip flaps on child and all of that. And <laughs> yeah, um, the, the coach liked me and yeah, nah, I went from there already. So if you had to like give one piece of advice for like younger players, because I know like a 16 year old and he was trialing with like Brentford and um, Crystal Palace and all these kind of clubs, but right now he doesn't have a club. And again, yeah. you said that it knocks your confidence. Yeah. So, like, if you had to give yourself, like, one piece of advice, yeah, maybe five or six years ago, what would that be? Oh, boy. Um, yeah, no, nah, obviously, I think it, it's tough for anyone. And 
uh, you need to understand that it will be tough and mm. but just keeping the mindset that football is opinion so even if if 10 people say no all it takes is is one man to to like what you're doing and but does do those opinions get in your head so it can and it, i think it's it's natural it's oh, natural okay. for it to to get but i think as long as you have that self mm. belief and and keep that knowing of your ability because i think everyone has a thing inside them where they know like what they can do is is, is special so I think just keep pushing and, and have belief. And if someone says no, obviously it's tough, but just brush it down and keep going. Don't let it get to you, or try not to, as much as it as much as it does hurt. But yeah. I promise you that uh, one one person has to say yes, and then that's that's all you need. In every sort of footballer's career, there's like key coaches that sort of believed in them when others didn't. So in your career, like who are the personnel that? really backed you to a hill and said, listen, Jaden, you're going to make it. You've got it. You've got it, man. Keep yeah. going. Like, who are those people? Yeah, the first one is um, Kwame Ampadu at Arsenal. Um, he like he always believed in me, even when... I think he was the one, to be fair, when I was 14, that he was backing me to the death, saying, like, you, like, you need to give, give him another two years. Because I was very small at that age as well, very small and skinny. So um, I was, used to get pushed about a lot, and it was, mm. it was tough, especially when everyone was growing. Um, but he always saw something in me, and then obviously when I got released, um, he was suggesting me to, to to a few clubs as well. And then obviously I met Godfrey, and 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 then he he took it from there. But yeah, no, he was a big one for me. And then a lot of coaches at Bournemouth, um, Alan Alan Connell, um, Sean Cooper, uh, Carl Fletcher, and then obviously he's um, a legend, isn't yeah, it, at Bournemouth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then obviously um, Scott Parker was massive for me in terms of uh, first team uh, giving me a chance and and really having belief. And a, a team that wanted to go up, it's, it's easy to not put you know, throw youngsters in. And but yeah, no, um, he was big for me for sure. What would you say are your biggest strengths and weaknesses? It's a good question as well. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, <laughs> on like on the ball, I'm, I'm very creative. I think mm. I got a, a good eye for a pass, um, good one v one. I like to dribble, create things. Um, I like to work hard as well. So a lot of uh, wingers, when you're creative like that, you don't want to. <laughs> Put the <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, nah, I actually enjoy it like uh, getting stuck in as well. So yeah. yeah, that for sure. And then weaknesses, maybe I don't tell you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, just probably my my strength, I, but I'm working on that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Just there's, there's a lot of things I can work on, and even so, like my heading, I'm like, I need to. <laughs> for a guy, for a guy, I can't header a ball. Yeah, you're you're kind of tall. Yeah, I'm a tall you? guy. I'm six. six foot one now, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have no excuses uh, <laughs> to be putting out headers. I need to, to work on that for sure. But yeah, yeah no, I think that's the biggest one, headed. Yeah, so like obviously, you're English, and I believe Jamaican as well, of both yeah. heritages. Like, have you got a preference in terms of which nation you play for? Because you're still young. Yeah. And, yeah, have you got a preference? You know, I don't, you know. Um, obviously, my mum and, and my dad are both from Jamaica as well. So, um, yeah, and I've got good heritage from there. And, yeah, no, nah, it'd be an honour to, to represent either. But I'm just... Have Jamaica, yeah. like, knocked on the door yet? Because I've <laughs> been, like, been on this, like, mad yeah. recruitment. I know, track, yeah. Like, bare man. Even, even uh, one of my teammates, Jamal, uh, Jamal Lowe, oh, he yeah. plays for Jamaica as well. And he's always telling me, yeah, he's a come, come true, he's a come. Come. <laughs> The yard <laughs> <is there. laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's got everything. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I just take him out. Obviously, I've only been playing um, professional football for, for two years, so I don't want to rush any decisions I'll see what happens yeah, no. so do you almost like analyse it because like when you look at like England for example there's like Phil Foden yeah. there's Raheem Sterling there's Mason Mount you can go it's, it's it's Sancho, yeah. Madison Rashford, that's not even making scores Grealish it's yeah. endless so do you almost look at that and think hold on maybe if I sway towards Jamaica that would probably be a better better option no not really only because like if I want to be at the the top level anyway, mm. so if I if I was going to play for England, then I have got to get to that. If I want yeah. to play for Jamaica, I still mm. want to be at that that same top level. Mm. So I got to be uh, the best I can be, and then um, the decision will, the decision will come when it comes. Um, mm. But yeah, now for sure, um, it'll be an honour to represent either, and, and and one day I'm sure it will happen. Yeah, I want to just talk about this season so far. As I said, Bournemouth for number five in the table, form teams. Like, what's the aspirations going forward? I know you're going to say, obviously, to survive. <laughs> that's the ready-made answer. But, like, yeah, like, for you personally and for the team, what do you think the aim should be? 
I, like you said, it's the ready made answer, but <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like you see the the quality as well in the league. Um, when you see the, against City, Arsenal, teams like that, like Liverpool, it's still tough. Like, it's, yeah, memory, it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to say we don't speak of that one too much, <laughs> but yeah, um, like when you see, like it's easy to to think, oh, the last five games we've been doing well. Um, which we have and we want to keep that going but you got to keep your feet on the ground like if you think mm. just because you've got, uh, got results in the last five that um, it's going to be an easy road then then you're, you're crazy so <laughs> we just got to keep our feet on the ground try and survive and then we'll see what happens keep pushing and, 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 and climbing up that table So h- how do you guys maintain this form? Obviously it's, it's, it's if, if you had the magic answers yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll maintain it all season <laughs> but what sort of like principles and minerals have been installed from from Gary O'Neill in terms of is it like off the ball more off the ball work we press as a team we you know yeah. what is he something has to have changed since Scott Parker Do, I wouldn't say it has like obviously uh, he has his own own methods and um but yeah the way we play is, is not too different I think the we play to our strengths um which is like we like to get around people we're good on the ball, uh, we're athletic, so um yeah, nah. We we just I think it's the way we train which is which is our success, like we, we train proper hard. Everyone that comes in always says like, How do you guys do this, man? <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to describe a day in the life at training Um <laughs> what, yeah. what happens? To be fair, it depends what day, but like mm. we have they call them work days, so we have Tuesday <laughs> 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 it's, it's right, we could have yeah. Tuesday, Wednesdays and then I don't know if you've heard of like um, Bielsa's murder. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Tyler yeah, yeah. Roberts was yeah. educating yeah. us on that. That is, but like it's like it's like that. So oh. we do like it's like three, five minutes or four, five minutes, depending. And like, there's no tactics. It's just it sprint around. Don't stop sprinting. Um, even if like you're running into a position that is gonna give them a chance, just go like mm. go to wherever the ball is. Everyone. Um, so, so is this ta- being implemented by the new regime, or this is something this that, you've is that we've been doing from from last season? Oh, okay, okay. And still now, so on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, mm. um, we obviously have tough sessions, and then gym. But they got us in the gym. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're always running as well. Yeah. So yeah, no, I think we train proper hard, and, and then. Uh, it helps us because I feel like we're, we're one of the fittest teams in the league. So, yeah, uh, that's what we need to be to, to have a chance. Mm, I wanted to speak about Dom Solanke. As I said earlier on, he's someone that I rate very, very highly. He used to play for my team, Liverpool, yeah. Chelsea. And like now he seems to have really like found his foot as a professional. Like yeah. Obviously, going to the Championship last season, banging in goals. Like He does everything as a front man. So how is he as like a person and, and as a player? That's, he's a he's a waste man. <laughs> 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 nah, no, joking. Nah, no. that's my guy. Um, yeah, no, he's a top guy, man. He's proper funny. He's proper chill. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I think um, everything that he's doing now is, is all he deserves. Obviously, he's been at a top level since he was a kid. I think he's he's been doing it since he was like seventeen. Um, but yeah, no, nah, he's an unbelievable player. And I think obviously a lot of people can can look into to the numbers and everything. But when you actually watch him and you see his game, like he's an unbelievable player. And, and, and now he's getting the goals to go with it. So um, yeah, everyone will see for sure. Another player I wanted to talk about because again, from the outside, there's a perception of him, you know, like rough. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm going to talk I, Jefferson I yeah. Lerma. <laughs> like you see him getting red. So I remember yeah. in the Premier League, it'll be like, how is he as a person? He's, he's a bad man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, he's too funny, man. Like he's 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 learned to speak English now, so you can actually speak to him. But yeah, no, he's proper funny. He's a crazy guy. But like the way he plays, he's he's front foot all the time. Even in training, like you don't want to get too close to him because your ankles might go. <laughs> but yeah, no, he he's just yeah. he's front foot. He's aggressive, but he he's exactly how he is on the pitch. Like he's just mad. Um, but yeah, he's he's a, he's a top player, man. Like without him. You can see, like the team is a, is a different team. So, when players don't speak English, is it like difficult to communicate, or is, would you say football is like more universal? Yeah, so? I think now, like you got so many languages in the, mm. in the squad. So, um, to be fair, like they know like football terms, or mm. say so he'll just say man on, no, like he, he yeah, does stuff no, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I think uh, football is universal now, and yeah, no, for sure, um, it's easier to to communicate now than probably it was back in the day. Yeah, so any of our like thoughts regarding football, anything you want to say to us or in <laughs> terms sure, of what's right. happening like, for the rest of the season or any plans you got? And we'll just keep pushing, keep working mm-hmm. and, and hopefully um, 
have some score some more goals, have some special moments, and and uh, have a special year for sure. You thought you had another one yesterday as well, yeah, didn't it? That offside one, I didn't it? I saw you celebrating yeah, on match of the day. I believe it, bro. I promise you, I, like. Even when, when they played it forward, I sort of knew he was offside, but mm. I'm not used to VAR yet. Like, it hasn't oh, really man, sunk in. Yeah. So when he hasn't put his flag up, I'm like, dash now. Yeah. I'm in the box. I've scored. Didn't even think to look back. And now, like, it, it's obviously it so, killed me, man. So would you say you prefer VAR? Because I was watching a champ game over the weekend, Chris, uh, QPR um, versus Reading. And obviously yeah, in the chat, bro, that was a shocking decision. What, yeah. the handball one? Yeah, mm. like, come mm. on, that's a stonewall mm. pen. Yeah. Uh, like, do you prefer it or you rather the game just flow? Because come on, let's be honest, like some of the decisions, they're farcical. Like yeah. four minute wait, five minute wait, you're waiting, <laughs> you're left in the lurch, you don't know what's going on. So what's your take on VAR as a player? Yeah, to be fair, like, like I said, I'm, I'm just getting used to it. Obviously... Mm. For us, it hasn't really gone in our favour. Like every time we seem to look up at the board, it says the decision that we don't need. Um, but yeah, no, I think it, it it does help because when they get it right, obviously, mm. like I, I assume, like if if it was offside and the champ, the manager's coming out slating the, the line though, and he said, "Listen, like, I'm sorry, I didn't see." Mm. But um, yeah, it is annoying when when it don't go in your favour. But yeah, it can take long. But I think when they get it right, it's definitely a big thing that can that can help us. So as a player, like, would you prefer like officials, referees to come out and say, "Okay, I made the error"? Would that be would that give more clarity to players to accept decisions? Because let, let's be honest, some we have to be real. You yeah. can't say I would say <laughs> it some of the decisions that we see week in week out, especially against the smaller clubs, you see they can't get penalties at, for example, Old Trafford because they can't give it to them, or Anfield, you know, there should be a red card, but because it's Van Dijk, they can't. You get what I mean? So as a as a player of a club at a smaller team, do you feel like sometimes the, the officials are harsh on you guys? No, no, <laughs> no, no, for sure. No, nah, not not really. Like, I don't, not on purpose anyway. Mm. Like, I think the way the game goes, especially as an official, like, you're human. So when, when the crowd are screaming handball in a big stadium, you might get affected by it. So, <laughs> like, so I think, um, yeah, like I say, I don't know if they should come out and say that because when I, when, I, when I pass the ball five yards and I, and I give it away, I don't mm. have to. So I think... When you look at it as a human perspective, like we we all make mistakes, and yeah, I think I'd rather, to be fair, I'd rather if there was probably no VAR and we just okay. accept the mistakes and and it is what it is. But mm. um, now that they have it, I think it sh- they should always get it right, in my opinion. Mm, so you've got a day off today that you've kindly come down to travel and see us. Like, so what do you get up to on on your days off? I just chill. Obviously, I, I like to to go back and and see my my family, my missus, stuff like that. See, today's a Sunday, so I'll go home get some some good Sunday dinner. Yeah, what are you having, man? Tell us, because there's a yard shop down the road. Like, <laughs> every time we come studio, we yeah, yam it. Yeah, yeah. That Pops fried up. chicken, yeah, oh, plantain, oh. stew chicken, yeah. mac and cheese. All what's your it. what's your go to? Oxdale. To be fair, I, I don't really like the bows on that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's too was, much. Fit, it's bro, too much you get about. food, you spend twelve pound, it'll give you rice and bone. That's what I'm like, saying. It's too much. Too yeah. much about. So I like I like stuff with good meat on yeah. it. So <laughs> <laughs> I can really get onto it. But yeah, man, uh, stew chicken, curry chicken, all of that, man. Mm. I love I love my yard food for sure. So talk to us about life outside of football. What do you What do you get up to? I'm a I'm a big big FIFA player. I, I, I love playing FIFA. Um, I love trainers. So I'm always uh, researching about um, shoes and. Do you have a plug? What? In terms of like, you me? know, you get these mad reseller yeah. prices. Yeah. Do you have I'm, a plug? Like, if you want something, do you get it? I try. Like mm. you, you need to know. Mm. That, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying. I'm always trying, but sometimes you have to pay above the price to get what yeah, you need. Yeah. So. What, what trainers are those? Those uh, are uh, mad. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude. from when I bucked you, I was, yeah. like, I was like, rah. These are some some Travis Scotts I got on right now. I'm jealous, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they're Can the camera like see them? Bro, they're going for like two bags. Like it's it's, mm. this, it's, it's, it's a disaster, man. I'm, yeah, I'm the, sad. The reach of the game is crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Man. So like people. what other things do you get up to like in terms of I know you're a young player, you're still only at twenty two. So like people talk about setting themselves up for life outside of football kind of thing. Yeah, so are there yeah. any things you're putting in place at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to uh, trying to start investing in property and stuff like that and just making investments so um you always got a, a good flow of money. But yeah, I'm just I'm working on that and, and obviously um just trying to trying to set myself up for obviously life after football, like you say. 
And how do you deal with the fame in terms of being a professional footballer? Because at the end of the day, you're at the start of your career, but we know you're going to fly. You're going to get to the top. So how do you cope with like being stopped in public or, oh shit, is that Jaden? Like, you get what I mean? Like, how, <laughs> yeah. how, how do you deal with it? To be fair, because I'm, I'm, I'm at Bournemouth, it's, it's not too big, so you might get stopped a couple of times in the back and imagine for a guy like Rashford, he, mm. he probably can't even go to, to his local, but me, I can I can walk around, there's no problems, mm. the Bournemouth fans, they'll come out, but it, it's not too, so for me, I, I'm okay with it, it's, it's, I wouldn't really call it fame yet, because it's, mm. yeah. but like, I can go to London, no one's going to know who I am. Seriously, guess, so yeah. you still don't, people don't. Only if you know yeah. Only yeah, if you know Yeah, ball. exactly. Like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. I can walk around. No, like, it's, yeah. it's no problem. So, yeah, like for me, it's it's not a problem yet, and I'm sure, like you say, in a few years' time, when it's I when I do fly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I do fly, it will be a lot more. So, if there was one thing in football that you could change, what would it be? One thing in football. Yeah. Um. They need to give me that goal back yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe no, no offside so I can just go high and keep it steady. <laughs> Something like that. Harlem will end up yeah. scoring 100 yeah, goals. If that's yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So like on Harlem, how many goals this season do you think? He, he has to hit. I don't even know. If you don't hit 40, I'll be surprised. Yeah, I'll be surprised. Mm. I'll be yeah, surprised because yeah, the way yeah. he's going right now, as long as he stays fit, yeah. he's, a, he's a problem still. So, yeah, no, nah, if, you, if you don't hit 40, 35, I'll, I'll be very surprised. So in terms of like wingers that we see in the Premier League or all over Europe, are there people that you like, not study, but like look at their game and think, hmm, no, I like the way he does that kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. Like, which yeah. players are those? I love, to be fair, I watch all of them. So in the Prem now, I love Riyad Mahrez, um, Grealish, mm. I like the way Saka plays, Martinelli, uh, Luis Diaz, Zaha. So I like I like all of them, man. I, I love. I'm a big fan of football, so yeah. when I see them play, I I, I appreciate I like, appreciate skill and, and their quality for sure. What's your thoughts on social media? Do you like in, it in general? Yeah, uh, yeah, I like it, man. <laughs> 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 to be fair, I, I can't say I don't like. It. I spend a lot of time on there, like scrolling through TikTok, Instagram, mm. stuff like that. So yeah, no, I I enjoy it, man. Yeah. Which I try not to do too much, but yeah, nah, for me, it's good, man. What things on social media and like TikTok are you enjoying right now? Oh, that's a good question. Have you heard of this um, speed on. guy? I, I uh, shall speed. He's a mad <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's too funny. He's a <laughs> he's, honestly. He's, listen, he's ripping up this yeah, 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 social yeah, yeah, media yeah, it's thing, man. It, man. It's killing like, it. I've seen, I've seen some, I even see some video of his growth in like how quick it was. But yeah, Exponential like, growth, it's, man. It's mad. Like, but yeah, he's doing this thing. He's, he's mm. funny. He's crazy. But yeah, I, I love it all, man. I watch mm. YouTube all the time. So, so what things are you watching on like YouTube? Uh, like mm, funny stuff, like Chunks Philly. Yeah, them, yeah, like, yeah. Then like I always put a podcast on. This is how I said I, I knew you guys. So I'm watching um, HC Pod as well. Oh yeah, you know yeah, that. Chucky. And yeah, 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 yeah. I so watch that stuff. Filthy fellas as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them. So yeah, I, I'm always watching the podcast. So you're in tune with the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think I had one more, um, and it was in terms, in regards to the potential like all star Premier League sort of like all star game. And obviously there was like a bit of a backlash from the media saying, oh, Americans coming into our country and yeah. trying to determine what needs to be done in football. But I've spoken to like people within the game. I've spoken to players. I've spoken to agents. I've spoken to people close to clubs. And they're saying, you know what? Like, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah, to be fair. I think the way he said it is is probably what people... Uh, okay. I haven't seen the clip fully, but but yeah, no, I think, to be honest, like, why not, man? Like, mm. I think it would it would do numbers. Like you see, like these these charity games that that, that that make serious money for the for these charities. So I think if you if you put some some crazy players all together on the pitch, and I think it would it would it would be. I don't think it. I don't see why it'd be a bad. And idea. I think it gives like the players, especially at like, the smaller clubs, an incentive. Mm, so yeah. for example, like someone like Wilfred Saha, he's at Crystal Palace. Let's be honest, he's not going to win the Premier League, but it's sort of like a... An incentive. Yeah, like, yeah. bro, you're one of the best players in the Premier League. You're playing at a smaller club. You're in that team because you perform yeah. every year. You get what I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So everyone will be, will be fighting to, to, not just to get in the national team, but to get in the, mm. the All-Star game. So, so, yeah, I don't see why it's a bad idea for sure, man. Mm, so, like, just final thoughts, like, any message to the Bournemouth fans? Because I know a lot of them are messaging us saying, oh, what's going on with Jaden's contract? It's up in the summer. Like, any message that you can give them? 
yeah um you know just thank you for the for the support as always and you know um it's all gonna make sense soon and yeah um for sure uh something good will happen for sure okay so you're confident of getting that extension <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say that i didn't, I didn't say that i said it's all gonna make sense and yeah we'll see what happens man, for sure cool. uh, and and the last one for me is music who are you rocking with um boy baby little baby gunna <laughs> d block europe dave Stormzy song the other day oh was, yeah it was crazy no, made me do it yeah yeah um but yeah, I listen to a bit of everything, really. Are you um, rocking with Afrobeat or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Which artist yeah, yeah. from Afrobeats? Was he Bernal, yeah. Wizkid? Yeah. Um, I don't want to say his name wrong. Asha 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's um, flying. Yeah, he's Are you going to his concert? Let me not even ask. <laughs> people start acting funny and stalking. Yeah. So yeah, forget uh, that. But yeah. Um, yeah, all of them, man. Mm. I, I'm new into it, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'm learning, yeah, yeah. I'm learning. Cool. Cool. So Jaden, before we round up, um, we've introduced a new sort of segment to the podcast where we ask um, the person that we have on to recommend a potential guest in football that you feel will be a good fit for this platform. So who are you recommending? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you said I can't say um, Namdi. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, Namdi. yeah, he's got a crazy story, but... Um, my guy Jordan Zamora, he's a funny guy. Jay Z, yeah, Jay Z. <laughs> he's a yeah proper funny guy, and I think he'll he'll fit well. And obviously Jamal Lowe as well. He's got oh, a crazy yeah. story where he's obviously come through um, the non-league system when he's working as a. I won't say his whole story just in case you get it <laughs> <one>, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, I think uh, those two got it's got some good stories, and yeah, I'm for sure that they'll be good guests. Think, yeah, yeah, I think no. we covered a lot. Yeah, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure to chop it up with you man you've been honest you've been open you've been transparent you've basically been an open book so <laughs> we, we appreciate it bro Anytime, man. thank you for having me as well man for sure no thank i love bro we're definitely going to stay in contact and keep talking to you and as dot said earlier we're going to be like looking at your progress hopefully more prem goals yeah, yeah hopefully sure. more appearances on match of the day <laughs> slamming them in so yeah man love bro thank yeah you. and as we've said earlier this is just the start you know you're at the start of your journey and we know that you're gonna fly so we're going to leave it there. That's another ep episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. As I said previously, follow our Twitter handle, which is at podcast underscore TBG. Our Instagram, which is at pod underscore TBG. Our TikTok, that is TBG pod. It feels like I'm plugging a million things, but I have to <laughs> leave a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.